Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast sponsored by First Down Playbook. Got the code down there at the bottom. Save 25%. Rack coach. Tip of the spear, Scott Peters, assistant offensive line coach from Cleveland Browns company. The top hopper. They're taking over, coach. Top hopper is taking over from Vertex. All right. And then we got sports workbook. Scott Abel, you will get a free sports workbook reach out to them on twitter or they'll reach out to you and coach i appreciate you reaching out to me um and coming on the clinic i've tried to get you for a while you're very busy um for the guys that don't know that are watching or will be watching coach tell us a little bit about you and where you're from and we froze up coach i don't know if that's me it probably is let me make sure I'm the only coach in America yeah, I, that does. Yeah, did, did I freeze up, Coach? Yeah, yeah, Coach. You, hey, listen, you, you froze up. It was all good, though. I mean, I, I think we're back. Okay, and- so ho- hopefully I'm going to close some of these windows, Coach. I don't know. So this might be a sabotage. Yeah, pretty- Somebody might be sabotaging. I, I can do this- post-production. I was bragging about yeah, that. This yeah. is the only unedited live podcast in America. But, Coach, hopefully you won't freeze up. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Coach, and where you're from. Uh, Well, listen, hey, Troy, excited to be on here today. And let me tell you how much I've enjoyed watching the podcast take off, right, the the quality of guys and coaches you've had on your show. It's it's been really awesome to watch. Uh, So, you know, uh, I guess a little bit about myself. uh, You know, I am, as Troy knows, I'm a Virginia native and spent most of my career coaching high school football in Virginia. Um, loved it. Uh, had a really nice run at Amherst County High School, won a couple state championships and was very fortunate in, in 2008 to be hired as the offense coordinator at Washington Lee University. And, you know, that that really was kind of life changing for me. Right. And uh, so in 2008, I, I went to, to Washington Lee and uh, four years later was named head coach and uh, did that until 2018, where I was hired down here at Davidson to to, to run this program and take over here and uh, been here ever since. Uh, love what I do. Uh, blessed to be around great guys like yourself, Troy, and build relationships across this this football community. And uh, yeah, I, I'm fortunate to. I'm a guy that wakes up every day and loves truly what what I do. Developing people, developing players, you know, uh, building programs, and uh, that's just that's a quick skinny on Scott Abel. Yeah, Coach. Uh- the one thing about you um, is that you did not play college football. You played college baseball at Longwood. And I know Longwood had a great baseball coach, a legendary. Can you talk a little right. bit about him, Coach? Oh, I'd love to. So, Buddy Bolding, right? And, yeah, so uh, I grew up playing every sport ever ever created. That was my father's goal, that we'd all just be uh, throwing ball, catching ball, shooting ball, whatever it was. And football is always my first love. but Baseball afforded me a scholarship to go to to go to college at Longwood, and uh, was very fortunate. And so I was a catcher, and went to went to Longwood to play for for Coach Bolding, and really had an unbelievable career. And his impact um, on me was um, really, I mean, there's a reason I'm coaching today, right? Because all the coaches that have worked with me through these years had an impact, and that impact, right, has led me to where I am today. Whether it's a basketball coach in the past, whether it was my dad who grew up coaching me and my two brothers in youth sports um, or Coach Bolding, who was my college coach. And, you know, at that time, uh, in, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, you know, scholarship baseball programs didn't have a lot of resources. So Coach, he didn't have assistance. And so he, he used us as captains. So I was a two-year captain to really help run and manage parts of the program and practice. And so what a great training for me as a leader and a future leader to get my, get my feet wet on, on being in leadership roles. And so, you know, I, I did that. We played in the college world series in, in 1991. Uh, Kevin Tucker or are you, are you after Kevin? No, it's Michael Tucker, Michael Tucker. Yeah. No, no. Listen, this is yeah, a good one. A good one. Yeah. Cool. Well, I got, you know, so I got drafted in 1992 by the Kansas city Royals and, and uh, I got drafted. I say this a lot because I, I batted in the three hole in front of Michael Tucker. Michael was our four hole hitter and he was a year behind me, um, but no one wanted to pitch to him. Man. Right. 
in his last two years, if, if our one hole hitter my if, or my roommate who batted in the two hole, if they got on base, I knew I was going to see some good pitches because mm. no one, no one wanted to throw to Michael. So uh, I always say I, I, I got drafted because I saw a lot of good pitches and uh, I, I'm very grateful for Michael. And there was he a had, lot of scouts too. There wanted coach. I mean, well, it, it really was right. They, in, you know, in 91, my junior year, uh, we really got the program on, on a national map, right? We went 41 and eight. Uh, we, we, we won a lot, right? And big programs that were bigger than us. We won the Virginia Tech tournament. We, we went to the College World Series, finished uh, in, in fourth in the World Series. And Michael just exploded, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, you couldn't help but notice who he was and his talent. And so that next year, my senior year, it, there were scouts at every practice, um, we away games, home games, and so double headers. I, I knew if I if I did my part, uh, I, I knew I had a good shot of getting drafted. I, I really did. I knew that that senior year, I had had a I had a really nice junior campaign, and so coming into my senior year, I knew if I did what I was capable of doing, I, I would have a shot. And I had a brother got drafted ahead of me that went with the wow. Rangers, and so I understood a little bit about how it all worked. Um, you know, so I wasn't naive to the process that. You know, they take a lot of guys in Major League Baseball drafts. Yeah. And and I, and I was a catcher, so everybody needs bullpen catchers as too. So I, I knew I had a shot to get drafted. And, uh, yeah, you know, I don't talk much about my professional baseball life. It's not really how my totem pole of things I, I'm proud of in my sports world. I mean, I'm, I'm proud. And, it, you know, I, I feel like I did something that I grew up dreaming of doing. But at the end of the day, at least, right, playing – Playing minor league baseball was one of the least enjoyable experiences of my playing career, right? (laughs) Can you believe that Michael Jordan did it? Did Uh, he really do it, though? Did Michael Jordan really do it? Well, listen, he he, he played a season, and, and, um, (laughs) you know, watching him and the level he played at – the, the amazing part is how long he stayed away from baseball and then came back and had some marginal success. I mean, I think that's the way to put it, right? He didn't have the success he had on the basketball court. But I no. I say often, right, right, I think baseball, hitting a baseball, the mental toughness that comes with it is one of the toughest things. And, and so for, a, for an athlete who's been out of it so long to jump back in and have any kind of success, yeah. Yeah. Tells you what I mean, kind of hit the ball over the fence. The dude hit home runs. Yeah, I so, mean they found out he couldn't hit a curveball, and then I mean it was over with. But right, I mean yeah, you know, yeah, so those, right, coach. Those guys who jump out of it, jump back in. Right, we we saw Tim Tebow try to do the same thing, and it, it, it's really it's very difficult, right? I mean, everybody, and it's it's now when you hit a baseball and you hit it right, there's very few things that feel better. So I'll tell you that. Wow. Yeah, you know it's out of there. You know you got it. You do. Um, but coach, the the first time I know I've told you this many times, but it hasn't been documented on YouTube forever. But the first time I ever remember you, coach, is when you had your Central Virginia Coaches Clinic, and I may have got that name wrong, like I got Michael Tucker's name wrong. Called it, the, called him the Thomas Dale coach, Kevin Tucker. He went to Hampton City, which is in Farmville, yeah. uh, in Charlottesville. You had the hotel, and you had a clinic. And yeah. I, I went up there, and I was probably my first year coaching, probably around 2001 or 2002. And I remember you had Brad Bradley speaking, and basically it was a hotel room. Yeah. And how many years had you been doing the clinic, and what got you doing the clinic? And that's the reason I started doing clinics was I went to yours, and then I went to uh, Bob McGregor's at DeMatha High School. And I was like, okay. Like I didn't make the playoffs. I was nine and one at Meadowbrook. What am I going to do? Hey, they say I need to fundraise. Let's do a clinic. So talk, talk a little bit about that clinic, coach, that you yeah, had well, when you were head coach. Well, listen, I would tell you, Troy, we probably I, I will say for myself, I looked I looked a lot younger then, right? Those are those are you many great, years coach. ago. Oh, shoot, I don't know about that, but um, yeah, listen, I love being a part of the and you got you got the name right, Central Virginia Coaches Clinic. <laughs> uh, you know, it was really a brainchild of of my assistant coach at the time and myself. We had uh, John Berlin, who is still my right hand man, right? Mm-hmm. So 
you know, that's a great story in itself. Uh, John and I started coaching together when we were at Albemarle High School in 1993 or four. And I was a ninth grade football coach. He was a JV coach and really been been a part of each other's lives in, in some capacity since then. Right. And he, he is my defense coordinator here at Davidson. But uh, in 2001, um, we when I took the Amherst job, uh, we had we'd been clinicking together. He wasn't coaching with me yet. Uh, he, he had been a head coach at Monticello High School in Charlottesville. And, and we had tried, but we would travel together to go to the Virginia Tech coaches clinic or go to the UVA coaches clinic. Right. We, we enjoyed it. We, we were trying to grow our, our brand. We were trying to, to grow as coaches. Um, but I, I, to, in full transparency now, one of the things that we always left frustrated with was we wanted to hear more high school coaches, right? We were young high school coaches trying to grow and, you know, listening to uh, an NFL coach at the time, listening to, an offense coordinator at a major power five school didn't always resonate with what we could do in our programs. And so, uh, yeah, we decided that we, we would try to get this clinic up and started and invite high school coaches. Right. Um, and it, it, it took off. Right. And, and as yours did nothing like your story. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm just telling you, listen, I mean, come on. The, the, yeah. The, 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 the clinics that, 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 that coaches run. If you haven't, if you haven't been a part of them, you should, cause they're special. But, uh, it, it was, it was really what we wanted to be. It was an opportunity to fellowship with other high school coaches, get to, to learn from each other. And, uh, you know, it, that's what it was. And we did it, uh, I think seven years. Um, you know, uh, when I left, uh, Amherst and went to Washington Lee, um, my, my timing, uh, I, and because of my new job, forced me to kind of step away from the clinic and, and John Berlin, I kept it going for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, and then it, it kind of dissolved itself. Uh, you know, things just went in different directions for us, but it was a great time for us. Right. You know, we were young coaches with young families, right. Uh, you know, and it, it gave us an opportunity to, to really branch out and, and improve ourselves. Yeah. My, my friend, Brad Lutz, um, who I played college ball with and became great friends with when he coached at Verona. He started a clinic down there in Roanoke at William Byrd. And yeah, I, I any any coach out there um, you know, that wants to start a clinic, I would recommend it because you're making other coaches better and you're bringing coaches together. Talk a little bit about that, Coach, being a high school coach and the high school coach wants to go to college, the college coach wants to go to the pros, and the pro coach wants to go back to high school. And I, how do I move up? I got one guy, he watches every clinic, and he asks 100 questions. Some of them y'all don't see because I don't let them go on the screen. But he wants to know, how do I move up? How do I get a job? I'll work for free. Talk, talk about that, Coach. Yeah. That's a uh, lot. But just yeah. Well, you know, um, I I don't know if I have any uh, earth shattering advice. Uh, I I would tell you, you know, um, got to got to find the right situation. It's what fits you? What fits your 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 life at the time? I mean, for me, that was never really my my thought process. When uh, I started coaching high school football, I was m immediately reconnected with my love and passion for football, which I loved. Mm -hmm. Right? I grew up a quarterback, loved it. Just wasn't. Wasn't good enough to play at a scholarship level like I was for baseball. So um, loved it, reconnected. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I really thought I was going to be a high school football coach forever. Um, and, you know, my advice to, to coach out there, you should coach where you are. Like, that's the best job you're ever going to have, and you're going to be there forever. And mm -hmm. that's really how I've approached my career. You know, uh, when I was at Amherst, uh, I, I thought I had the best job in America. Right. And yeah, you um, did. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, and, and, and I treated it that way. And um, what got me thinking about college football was a phone call from someone else. Not, you know, it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't go seeking out Washington Lee, uh, my brother at the time. So I, I got a pretty good lineage of family athletes in my family. Right. You know, I, I spoke about uh, one brother who played professional baseball along with myself and then I had another brother who was a college baseball coach. And uh, at that time, he's like, hey, I thought about you when I saw this job posting. Right. And 
he goes, I hope you don't mind, but I know their baseball coach really well. And it was at Washington Lee. And I just sent him a message because I knew he was on their football staff as well, and et cetera. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I appreciate that, brother. I, I don't know if that's for me. And, well, you know, long story short, I actually turned the job down. The first time Washington Lee offered me the job, I turned it down because I love coaching high school football. Right. I thought I was the luckiest man on earth. And uh, but, you know, good thing for me, they offered me the job twice and I accepted it. Right. And it gave me a chance to grow. But it, it had to be the for me, what made make sense at the time it was a, the right thing for me and my family. Right. You know, making the decisions for the right reasons are very important, mm-hmm. not just chasing the biggest job or the next job. And that's always my advice to young coaches. Right. Love what you're doing, where you're doing it. Like it's the best job that you could ever have. And everything else will kind of take care of itself. Now, what I would tell you, you know, build relationships, right, across all levels. Treat each level uh, like they're the most important thing going, right? High school football is awesome. It, it we're, we're all here because of high school football, right? Everybody from the pro coaches to the college coaches. No what, doubt. Where will we be without Friday nights, right? And, and so – uh, and, and, you know, build those relationships along the way. And if an opportunity arises that makes sense for you and your family, then you should consider it. But if it doesn't make sense, you should not just move ranks to move ranks. I, I don't I, I think people fail that way. I, I think people um, get swallowed up by the industry if you're moving just to move. And I, I think that's happened. I mean, we can all probably point to different examples probably across the country where people have moved just to move because it, it looked like a better job. It looked like a bigger opportunity. And mm-hmm. then ne- next thing you know, right, they're, they're, they're not succeeding. Right. And it's a struggle. Well, you, you probably did it for the wrong reason. So, you know, if the opportunities afford you for the right reasons, I'm all about it. Uh, how do you get there? Well, you got to be patient. You know, you, you, you got to, you got to, and, and then success along the way, right? A lot of people want it to happen immediately, and they want to, they want to move up without all the the hard work and the years behind it, right? I didn't get here by accident, right? I, no, I, I wanted every school I was at, and um, opportunities somewhat found me. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't apply for this job, all right? I'm an FCS Division One coach now, and you know, 15 years ago I was coaching high school football, and. Hmm. I didn't apply for this job. Right. So, you know, you, you got to surround yourself with good people. Right. And, and uh, attach yourself to people that will help you grow. And then, you know, coach like you're going to be there forever. And, you know, don't worry about all that. That kind of finds itself. That's that's my thought. Now, I think other people in the industry would tell you, hey, go meet as many people as you can work for me and coach as you can. And then eventually one of them will bring you along. I think you build relationships. <laughs> I think you you. You, you put your foundation in hard work, uh, doing it the right way. And I think over time, good things will happen. Amen to that coach. And I mean, just thinking about, I mean, you starting that clinic 20 years ago, basically, I mean, it's almost led to this podcast today because I mean, I wouldn't have this podcast if I wouldn't have started that clinic and, I mean, the people that I've been able to meet and talk to, it's been amazing. And hopefully we've helped some coaches along the way. Um, you know, for the the recruits and the parents of the high school players out there, you know, and the high school coaches, you know, being a college coach and coaching high school ball, you know, sometimes players and parents, they're worried. You know, where's my son going to go? Is he going to get a scholarship? What camp do we need to go to? Coach, just t- what's on your heart about that? <laughs> well, I, you know, my experience is go a little deeper than that, Troy. I, you know, I, I raised a Division One football player, right? So not, not, not only have I been at so many different levels doing this and, and been a part of the recruiting process from the high school level, helping my guys get recruited to the small college level, now to a a, a mid college level, right? Um, but I did it as a parent. All right, so I think I have a very unique perspective on this. And, and you know, what, what what I would tell you is that uh, first and foremost, right? There, it's the the level of communication out there through social media, through all the resources for high school athletes now is unparalleled in our time, right? So if if the high school player can play, they're a scholarship player, they're going to be found. 
I, I, I really believe that. I, I think, it, you know, I, I think now it may not be the program that you, you and your family, <laughs> yeah, you and your family really imagined, right? I but, love Alabama. Yeah, I I mean, love, and Nick Saban talking? don't love me, even though I am in the OOUs, one of us is. I like it. You're in the OOU. I like it. Uh, there's the o, there's a million OOTs and there's very few OOUs. And the well, OOTs is one of them. And the OOUs is one of us. And Al Gross said that I'm one of the OOUs. I'm one of us. So, Coach, watch. I know you love Al Grow. If yeah. you coach football, how can you not love Al Grow? I mean, yeah. he oozes football, Coach. He does. And it, listen, I, I'm, I imagine his stories are, I mean, who he's worked with, right, the the, the level of coaches that he, he has been around and he surrounded himself with, it's unbelievable, right, you know. Um, but I would tell high school kids and parents, right, like have a plan, right, have a plan. And it's not just up to your high school coach. Right. It, it's up to the family to kind of develop the plan. So we did that for both my children. Right. We, you know, and I was honest, what level do we think they can play and where, you know, what are the academic level that we think are schools that interest you or are going to be a good fit for my, my two kids? We put a dot on a map and say, how far away from home are you willing to go? Right. Yep. And then all of a sudden, that you've narrowed that pull down and that's where we visit. That's where we went to camps. That's where we did our thing. And, uh, you know, we had a plan, right. And, and we were a part of it. We worked with the high school coach. Um, and I let the, I let, you know, Porter, my son who played at the university of Richmond, uh, had a great experience at, um, at, at both his high school and college experience and his high school coach did a great job. And I let him really run in Porter's recruiting. Like he ran out of the, everyone else's recruiting. And as a parent, I just I worked with Porter from behind the scenes. What are the things that are important to you? Right. You know, and I think that helps kids really narrow it down to. But you got to be honest. I, I, I want to hear I want everybody to hear me loud and clear. Right. Right. You should. You, know, you got to really you want your kids to chase their dreams. Um, but there's a lot of dreams to be had at a lot of levels of football and. and you know, it, it's a lot better to, to to play football than to watch football is what I tell everybody. And so, yeah. uh, you know, so, you know, get to camps, but don't camp yourself out. Right. The, as a former high school coach, right, you, you camp in 18 days during the summer is probably not going to put you in the best situation to to be ready for your senior year and enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Don't get so worried and emotional about every moment that doesn't happen for you or the ones that do and you, you're living and dying, everyone enjoy it. To me, going through that with both my kids is some of the best times, right? Taking recruiting visits when I could, getting on the phone with 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 coaches in schools. Uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely. And I think it's because I didn't put pressure on my son. I didn't, I didn't tell my – I maybe undersold my son at one point, right? I'm like, well, you're, you're going to be a great Division three quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of – and, and, you know, he ends up at Richmond and end up with multiple scholarship offers. But uh, the the part is I, I didn't put that pressure like you got to play at Virginia Tech or you got to play at UNC. I, that was never put on either one of my kids. And and I think that that is important for everyone to hear. I think we as parents, right, get so caught up in the process and the lights. And now that there's there's NIL money, right, there's, you know, there's uh, – there's all there's a lot of things moving parts now in college football that you, you just got to be careful, right? Don't don't put so much pressure on the situation. Let it happen, and it will happen. Yes. So control what you can control. Grades, have the best grades. Work out. Be a good kid. I mean, yeah. talk about that, coach. I mean, it's yeah, almost well, obvious. But it's it, like people yeah. overlook this. They're worried about the Twitter and can I wear a jersey? Can I take a picture? Can I, can I go to a visit? You know, yeah. I mean, one go to school. Let's be honest, right? Be, be, <laughs> go to class. Yeah, be a good community member. Okay, right. I mean, we as coaches walk in schools, and one of the first things I want to hear from the high school is what type of person they are, right? And that starts when I walk in that building and I'm meeting with front office people when I'm checking in, right? I'm checking in, get my little badge, right? It's printing me off, and don't think I'm not asking that person. Oh, do you know Johnny Smith, right? You know, and 
because uh, oh, you know, I wanna, yeah, exactly, they right? Do, uh, <laughs> there may not be conversations, but there'll be looks like you know, I'm not sure you want to <laughs> coach, right? So, uh, you know, that's my first advice: is man, be a good community member. Doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but you know, you want you want people. You know, parents are always going to say great things about their kids. By the way, parents, college coaches all know how you feel about your kids. You love them. That's great. All right, but you know, hearing what other people say about your children. Uh, when you when we walk into schools or or they're at camps is it, it's impactful and then certainly the, the grades part like and for us here at Davidson right I if you don't have a three five three six or higher and you haven't taken AP courses I can't recruit you right I, I mean that think about that for a minute right now we're we're very unique we're about the most unique Division one experience in the country but I can't recruit you if you have two C's on your report card I can't recruit you now. Not, not I say, say that again. If you have two C's on your report card through your high school life, I can't recruit you. I'm if not. If you that. have two C's, he cannot recruit you. Cannot. Nope. But I, there's I, guys I, that want to take honors classes and make C's and D's. But well, I, you I, can't I, make a C. No, and and honors classes don't help me. I, we we <laughs> our, our our scholar athletes here have to take a minimum of three to four APs or dual enrollments. Right. Or IB program. And so we're really unique. So, yeah, if, if you're looking at a place like Davidson, which, I, you know, we're we're an Ivy League type school, then, I mean, you, you better challenge yourself. You better take some APs. And so having a plan early on is really going to help you. Right. And I want everybody to have a plan like they want to go to a Davidson, go to a high academic school. So, hey, hey, enro- hey, anybody listen, enroll in your APs, take dual enrollments, challenge yourself, but don't make many C's. <laughs> so, you know, that becomes really tough. And, you know, and then certainly I I, want to tell everybody, like, just don't get caught up that that's the only thing you have to do. Play other sports. Yeah. get man, get out there. Right. Uh, We watching football players that play basketball, too, is awesome. Play baseball. Right. You know, grow up, you know, do what you love to do. Right. But at the same time. Right. You know, don't don't walk away from one because you're so worried about I won't get a scholarship in the other. Right. Scholarships are hard to come by. There's a lot of levels of football and there's a path forward for everybody. Right. I, I mean, there's so, so many college football programs at so many different levels. Right. So be patient through it, but certainly you got to do all the other stuff. Right. You know, so my recruit, my recruiting talk for our kids and Troy, this will bring it all together would be, and I truly believe this football small, everything else is bigger. And I think recruiting is the same way. Right. The football part is small that unless you're the 1%, right. The 1% of, the college football player that's so gifted, everybody wants them, right? I mean, but they are few and far between. So They're unicorns, yeah, they are. I mean, so like Bigfoot. I mean, good. So good do good everything. Find them. Yeah, do all those other things because the other ninety-eight percent, right? What, what you know, one six one, one six two, one runs a four six, one runs. You know, right? the the differences aren't a ton, and so now. The coach is going to check out all the other stuff, right? Where, where, where is he as a person? Where's the academic piece? Okay. Uh, is this someone I want representing our program? So football small, everything else is bigger. And if you check those other boxes, you're going to be successful when you land wherever program you land, but choose it for the right reasons. Right. I, I remember, you know, um, when my son had, had to make a choice about a couple of different programs. And one of the questions I asked him before he decided on Richmond with another program, it's like, Hey, is that where you want to be in school? If you got hurt, you couldn't play football. Is that where you want to be? And he's like, I, I don't think so. I'm like, well, then we can rule them out. <laughs> right. You know, go to a place you want to go to school. Right. Yeah. You're getting opportunities at the division one level and scholarships, but at the end of the day, choose a fit that, that fits you. If football doesn't work out, meaning, you get injured. That happens all the time. It happens. Coach leaves. I Coach mean, leaves, right? Yeah, my son played for four offense coordinators in five years. <laughs> I mean, right? And four different position coaches. That happens, right? He had multiple injuries, right? So um, did he – but he loved his Richmond experience, and I, I think a lot of that had to do with choosing the right place for the right reasons. Yeah, so w- whenever you come and speak at the clinic when we did it in person – you know, you always had the room full, Coach. Everybody wants to hear you talk, and that well, offense. I don't know about run. that. 
Now they my do, wife, coach. my wife doesn't my wife doesn't want to hear me talk. I know, coach. <laughs> um, I totally understand. But these high school coaches in Virginia, they want to know can I get Scott able to talk? So I mean, I don't know if you can even talk that much because I, there's probably gonna be somebody watching this from one of your opponents. But that offense that you run, you know, where did it come from? And coach, this is my buddy right here, Steve Saunier. Do you know him? He's a uh Offensive line coach at West Florida, a D2 yeah. school. This guy coaches in paradise. Man, well, great listen, advice. He, You're doing a great job at Davidson, Steve. Steve is the best. Oh, well, listen, I appreciate Steve. And listen, you, you got you got my main man, Tyler Phelps, down there, right? So they, they just uh, uh, brought a, a young coach on staff, uh, I think uh, either in a GA or quality control. I can't – but was my, my first quarterback here at Davidson. Wow. Tyler Phelps. Uh, unbelievable. He's going to crush it in our business, right? Troy, you're going to want to have, you're going to want to have Tyler Phelps on uh, here, here in a couple of years. That's how good he is. Uh, so um, Steve, I, I appreciate you. <laughs> you you give me a shout out and coming on here. You know, my offense, I, I will tell you this. It's just that I think the one thing I want everybody to know is the willingness to grow and evolve through the years. Right. I, I but holding true to the things that you believe are important for you and your program to be successful. So for us, without there's no secret we want to run the football. Okay, um, but that's looked different through the years. Meaning I was an under center. You were a wing T guy, right? At Amherst. Well, no, I'll, no, not not. I was you never always an team. option. But I was what I really was at, at the beginning is I was old Nebraska, right? I was I running some power, uh, mixing in a little bit of option. And then uh, as I grew it at Amherst, I started spreading the field, but still under center, right? M running more sets, looked a little more like Air Force at the time, right? Running, run once again, some option schemes, but never really, you know, people hear my name and they see our stats and think we're fle we're not flexible, nowhere near it. And, and now been over a decade that I've done everything out of the gun, right? You know, so in, in 2010, I moved my offense through the gun and grew it there with the same foundation. I want to run the rock, but now I, I want to be a little more diverse. I want to throw the ball better. I, I, I want to get more guys involved, and, and that's what we've done. You know, I mean, we've led the country in rushing, I think, nine of the last 12 years at wherever we've been. So that, that follows us, and, I, and I'm proud of that. But I think the advice I have for everybody is that happens because we had a plan. We were willing to evolve. You know, and it's just gotten better over the years. And um, now, instead of under center option, you know, we're we're an inside zone read team, is what we are, right? We we employ a little triple with that, right? And that, and we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna run the rock with our inside zone, our inside zone read system, and then we're gonna build some really nice play action game off that, and some quick passing game, and that's been a great formula for us here. Uh, and we continue to evolve. I mean, I think last year we threw it 16, 18 times a game. Right. So for those guys who remember me at the high school level, didn't do that. But I can now. Right. I, I, I have different pieces and I've been willing to grow because I've attended clinics like yourself, Troy, the clinic that you you put on for all these years and watching your podcast and understanding what could I possibly fit into my system that makes sense for my system. Right. But it is very unique. We. we we we're, we're committed to to running the football. We're committed to having option principles in our system, and that's the key, right? The option principles, developing that with your quarterbacks, developing that with your system, and then what do you build around it? That may evolve from year to year, you know. You know, so I, it's um, I love what I do, I, and I don't think there's many people who do it like we do it. And that's not saying we do it. Well, our offense is better than everybody. Else. We're just not we've had a lot of people try to copycat us right and, and hey i want to i want to run some option but you got to be committed to it and um our, our commitment is more to hey we're going to establish a great great running game and then we're, we're going to hit you with some great play action passing and, and and some explosive plays i mean we're an explosive offense you know we've averaged 30 plus points a game for 10 years now think about that right for 10 years plus and so um that, that's that's a pretty good number. And, and you know, so, you know, we're, we're not trying to control the clock. We're trying to be explosive. We're trying to – and it's a it's an exciting offense to run. And I tell my quarterbacks all the time, 
They don't get bored. They're making decisions. When we run the football, they're making a decision. You know, and, uh, you know, the whole new world of RPO, you know, we we got very little of that in there. There's there's a concept or two, but, you know, we hold true to who we are and what we know we can do to be successful. Yeah, I, I want to ask you a little bit about that because, I mean, <clears throat> whenever you watch TV, or, I mean, you probably don't watch much college or NFL on TV because you don't have time, but maybe after your season, like everything's an RPO. So like, that's what they say on TV. Yeah. I'm so saying- to me, RPO means a lot of different things. Like I, when Urban Meyer and whoever they were, you know, Rich Ryan, them was doing the zone read and the quarterback was running the ball out of the backfield and he was attacking the flank and he, you know, he could throw a bubble the same side. And then it was, I don't know, like good box, bad box, RPO. Like if it's a run, if we got a good box, run it. If it's not, throw a quick game. And then it's the RPO where the guy's in the pocket and he can hand it off or he can throw the ball down the field now. So now you don't want your offensive lineman running down the field. But like the option Colt, I mean, there there are Colts in this profession. I mean, they pitch the ball back. But I talked to the offensive coordinator at Washington Lee, and he gave me one of the best coaching points about the speed option, that the way they coach it, the quarterback goes flat, and that the pitch guy, they want almost to be even. So if the ball goes forward, they blow it dead. It's it's, it's genius to me. So talk a little bit about that, all the different RPOs and options. Like, which one are you, or are you all of them? (laughs) Well, I'm not. I'm definitely not all of them uh, uh, at all. And and I w- I would tell you that um, I mean, option football in some form or way is going to be it's going to live forever, right? And people yeah. will, people will reinvent it, right? And why? You know, so Troy, why why is it so important to football? Well, you know, it, it allows an offense not to block everybody, right? What are the toughest things to do in football, right? Block and tackle, right? There's yeah. still the fundamental. We can all create all these fun ideas and schemes and. We can try to, you know, madden our playbooks up to death. But at the end of the day, you're blocking and tackling is still where it's all where you win and lose. And so when, when you're running different option schemes or you're making decisions on numbers, that's what I call, right? It's a numbers game, right? Mm-hmm. You know, can I outnumber the defense when I'm calling my offense? Whether it's with a, a, a run scheme that's option scheme or a pass scheme that's option scheme. They're, it's all the same. Where are my numbers? And, you know, it the, the whole RPO tag – I mean, you, you could you could tag that 20 years ago when coaches were sending two plays in, a run play and a pass play, and, hey, let's – hey, by, by the box, as you said, hey, you check to the one you want to run, check with me. Well, you could call that RPO if you want. That's a run-pass option, right? So, you know, I, I think the guys that, that – the RPO really took off when te- teams wanted to be – run a triple without the pitch phase. They wanted to have the throw phase behind it, whether it's – behind the second level of the defense or to bubble. And, and, you know, for us, we do a little bit of that, but most of ours are still, you know, when, when, when we run a triple in our offense, which we can do quite a few ways, a little bit with an RPO scheme, but some traditional meaning with our inside zone, we'll have a pitch player and coach Jones who played for me at Washington Lee, right. Says exactly right. Right. Our pitch guys should be even or Man. slightly in front of our quarterback. And so, uh, I bet we get four to five incomplete passes that way a year, right? That 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 pitch is just a little too far in front of my slot. Well, we did this for years because, man, I, I've coached at two really high selective universities, right? Davidson and Washington Lee are really academically. Two oh yeah, of football. I've never had a kid that could get into Washington Lee. I don't think. Right. So so <laughs> yeah yeah I hear you. Two different levels of football, but academically incredibly similar. And so you're not always blessed with the fastest, the biggest. So to give yourself an advantage when you're in that, in that flank catching that pitch, well, you better be getting downhill. You, you, you we can't pitch it backwards, right? Yeah. There, and, and that's going to the gun also gave us that ability to do that, right? The under center option teams have a really hard time getting their pitch phase to that. They can't, right? So, you constantly see the under center option people pitching that thing backwards at 45 degrees. Well, that's if our guys pitch it at 45 degrees backwards, I, I am not happy at all. Um, and, and so, um, you know, for us, it, it, we're going to combine a little bit of, of 
what people would consider the new option world. I mean, we're in the gun, right? Nothing's old traditional option for us. Uh, but what we've done is we've taken some of that triple from under center, evolved it to the gun with our inside zone and how we see that, right? So when I saw the game from an under center running old Nebraska style, for those of you, I, I'm really dating myself, right? You know, uh, I know they did you see what Matt Rule did? Yeah, I did. I love with, with the thing yeah. with uh, Frank Solich. I mean, he yeah. only won like eighty percent of his games as the head coach in Nebraska and got yeah. fired. Yeah, exactly. Hope I, don't, hope I don't lose my mushroom society card <laughs> over that. But I mean, and then he went to Ohio and did the same thing. He did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, um, I, it's what I tell everybody, right? You know, everybody's so enamored with the the passing world, and we throw it. We throw it well. I mean, we were number three in the country in pass efficiency last year, right? We do it 17 to 18 times a game, but if we're throwing it 25 times a game, something's going wrong. You know, that's what I tell everybody, right? We, It's hard for us. Not every program can do that. Now, if I were coaching at, um, the the most elite program where I could get whoever I wanted in, right? And, well, that may change. That may help me evolve to a, something else, but I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a world that, right, you know, I'm – I mean, I that's why all the service academies run it. Yeah. So, right. I mean, well, and it and, works. And you got to well, practice they, all year for that jump. And I, they're, you know, you're, you're, they're trying to evolve. They're trying to, they're actually trying to look a little more like us. Uh, you know, watching some spring highlights, there's a lot of gun stuff going in. I know in both the academies. Uh, and uh, we'll see how they evolve with that. But um, yeah. So it gives us an opportunity to be successful. Right. You talk about Davidson football who had, won a total of seven games in five years before we arrived. And here we are after five years, we've won two championships, been to the FCS playoffs three of the last four years. And there's a lot of reasons. And most yeah, but it's not X's. I mean, it's not X's and O's ain't the number one thing. Cause I had a coach ask me, Troy, should I go to this clinic and pay a thousand dollars to learn from this guy? And I said, dude, you're only going to learn one phase of the game. Yeah. Offense. Yeah. I said, but what about the guy's defense? What about the guy's offseason? What about the guy's booster program? What about the guy's feeder program? Like, it's a lot. It, it just doesn't take one phase to win. I'm no. talking about Billy Mills. Like, if you're going to coach against Billy Mills, dude, you better bring it all. Yeah. Not just an offense or a defense. Like, you better have those kids in sixth grade working out. Or well, you're not no, going to compete. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, I mean, you know, <laughs> what, what our offense has done for us here, and early on, it, it gave us a little boost of confidence, right? And, you know, we're, we're playing really good defense. We're, our guys believe, right? And I think that's the biggest part. X and, X and O's don't win football games, right? But belief does. And my belief in what we do offensively spreads through our program. Amen. Right? I believe we're going to move the football. I believe we're going to score points and we're going to be successful. And that from day one spread through our program. Then all of a sudden you see your defense playing with a little more swagger, right? You, you got a little more confidence in every phase of your game. Like, oh, this this works. And that's what it's done for us. It's a, I think you can have the same belief in an air raid. I think you can do you yeah. have the same. For me, I've had this belief. Now I am 53. I've been calling my own offense since I was 25 at Alta Vista mm -hmm. High School, right? I was at Alta Vista High School. I was 25 years old or uh, 26. And who was, did you have to coach against when you was there? They, 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 it was Gretna. It was Prutney, the coach. Prutney was not. I did coach against Prutney, but not then. I, I coached against uh, Coach Prutney when he was at Gretna and I was at Liberty High School. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, uh, Brad Bradley was at William Campbell. Brad, Brad, once again, he got at William Campbell. I was a little ahead of them in that area. So I got. I just gotten hired out to this, and uh, I guess that was for nice. people that don't know. Yeah, if you know where, have you ever heard of nowhere? No. All right, it's <laughs> close to there. Like it ain't nothing close, Coach. I'm the only idiot. I'm first year coach at Virginia Union. I said I have a good idea. I'm gonna go from Roanoke to Martinsville. Oh the, mercy, Coach. I'm. I, I, I always say I did not pay attention in geometry class, uh, Coach. I, I I don't know where Rhode Island is on a map. I know geometry. Everybody laughs. But the I thought Rhode Island was near Delaware. I didn't understand it was near Boston. Like, oh. Coach, imagine that drive. Oh, I mean, I'm just thinking, oh, they're near each other. No, you have to. Man, it's no. – <laughs> You were listen, the high school coach in the middle of nowhere, Coach. Middle you're, of nowhere. Right? You're, yeah, you're, yeah. At Steph, you're at Steph Curry School. Uh, yeah. oh, my God. To eight things. <laughs> 
times have changed a little bit. Listen, I was at Alta Vista for one year. And uh, yeah, then I got hired at Liberty. Uh, that I tell everybody, you know, how do, how do you get, I've had a lot of questions. How do you get your first head job? Well, you, you got to get lucky at some point, right? So I, you know, I was hired at Liberty because no one else wanted the job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's true story. Like people turned it, I had no business getting it and I wasn't prepared, but Liberty High School in the Bedford County was going through some changes and numerous people had turned it down, right? I had true, th- this happened a year ago. One of my college buddies who's now living in Rono, they were, they were cleaning out their mom's, I don't know, attic. And she kept all these newspapers. And there's one from the year in 1997, I guess, when I was hired at Liberty. And the article named me the head coach at Liberty. But in the article, it talked about the other people that had turned it down. <laughs> huh. Don't ever speed. If you're in Bedford County, do not speed. Yeah. They will yeah. pull you over. Yeah, well, that's good advice. I, that's I want, great advice. Hey, I want, coach, you, hey, you I want life advice. advice. Yeah, that is life advice. Yeah, so yeah, so you know, for a guy who's been calling his own offense since I was yeah twenty whatever twenty five, I what hadn't changed for me in the years is the 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 foundation of it. the X and O's have changed a lot. But my belief in that these are the things to do to be successful for us have not changed. What it looks like has changed a lot, right? But so that's what I tell young, young guys who want to, right. They want to build, well, build something and build something you can build on. Right. Don't just go grab like the, the play grabbers. I call them play grabbers. Right? <laughs> yeah. We're going to run this play. Yeah. We're going to run this play. Right. I'm like, well, you know, that, hey, coach, coach, why don't we run this play? Yeah. Why, you don't, I bet you've never, you haven't had that in a long time. Coach, why don't we run this play? Because, they're not a OOT. They're not a yeah. one of them. Your guys are OOUs, one of us. Yeah. You have a tribe, Coach. Uh, well, Just like Al Gro says when he went to UVA, these guys are my tribe, yeah. the Jets, the Parcells tribe. Coach, you got your tribe. How many guys do you have in your tribe who are former high school coaches? Yeah, um, I currently have four on my staff, including, including – well, five, if you include me, that wow. at, one, at one point we're coaching high school football. Listen, and Troy, I don't call it a tribe, right? I call it yeah. a bush. I call it a bush, right? A there's bush. a coach. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's the coaching trees out there, right? Yeah. We, we call it uh, the, the Coach Abel bush, right? The coaching bush. Like Coach Jones at Washington Lee, he's part of the Coach Abel bush, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and um, that we've kind of nicknamed Chris Moore. Chris Chris Moore. Chris Moore, now the new head coach in Amherst County, right? Colin McConaughey, who's the head coach at Collegiate there in Richmond, right? They're, wow, they're part, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're part of the Coach Abel Bush. Uh, you know, Colin, Colin and Chris both played for me at Amherst. Um, and Chris still at, at, Chris remembers my ex-wife's name and my son's name. I mean, how how impressive of a guy is he, man? Uh, oh, I, listen, wow. come up. Yeah, if we we're we're now gonna change subject. How how happy am I for Amherst County, right? Like you talking about a place that it right where I have so much special. Love. It is so special for me, Troy. Y'all got um, the Michigan helmets. Yeah, I, I hope they didn't change them. Oh, they're done. They're, they've changed them years ago, but it's okay, right? I mean, I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> but the, the the love I have, the love I have for them, it, it it's it's awesome. Uh, and, and seeing them bring Chris back. Right. Um, and Chris and I talked a lot before all that happened. Right. Uh, as that job opened uh, about what it meant to be the Amherst County coach, uh, him. You know, that's a tough decision. Right. Going from he was at VMI and, and taking that job, um, you know, so really happy for him and his family. Proud of him. Uh, and, and as I am all my guys like, you know, Colin was just named the head coach at Collegiate about six months ago, maybe. Um, and been there for a while as a right hand man, and uh, he, you know, he played at the University of Richmond, and I've actually tried to hire Colin a couple times in my career. Go, you know, great young coach, right? And so, um, yeah, the Coach Abel Bush show, I, I, that it, it's, I think it's strong. I love it. It's not big, right? It's just it's a comfortable little bush. Uh, and it, it it has grown over the years, I guess. And uh, you know what I hope is guys are getting in. They're, they're getting into football, getting into coaching or staying in it because they had such a great experience with us, either as players or as coaches. That's what I hope, right? You know, I hope guys, you know, when they leave our program, they leave us. And I say us because 
you know, man, it's not just you. No, it's, it's, I'm one part of this, right? Yeah, it ain't you. It ain't just Harris coach Abel. No, you got, there's a lot of yous. There is a lot of us. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes into a program, whether it's your program, whether it's my program, whether it's at the high school level, the college level, it, there's, the similarities are, it takes a village and it really does. And, and so what I hope when people leave us, they've had such a good experience, they, they can't turn it off. Right. That's what, you know, I'm here today because of my senior year of high school football. I love football growing up, had a great experience with it for the majority of my life. And then my senior year was just, it was just one of those years that you, you dream about, right? I had a great year as a player. Our team had a great year. My, my best friends were a part of it and it was a family. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this today because of that experience, right? With those coaches, my my own family who followed me and went to every Friday night, right? And my my teammates. And so that's what I'm trying to when when we show up with our players here, even at Davidson, I want that same thing. I want them to have that feeling, that experience. And I want them to feel like, oh, how am I gonna let this go? And then now our guys get offered six figure jobs coming out of Davidson, right? Yeah, you know, they're going to work for Wells Fargo and Bank of America, they're going to the best medical schools, but we do have a couple coaches that come out, right? You know, um, and so uh, that's what we hope. So uh, what was the difference, I mean, from taking over Washington and Lee to taking over Davidson, where you'd been the assistant coach and became the head coach and then taking over a whole, whole new program? Like, what were the different challenges in those two jobs? And were they similar or different? I mean, I- yeah, the, the only thing that was similar was the the academic recruiting part. Right. So recruiting high academic kids was the only similarity. OK, the it was actually the similarity was more to my first head job at Liberty. I know that sounds okay. crazy, but the, the it's an overhaul. It's a total it, overhaul. Just right. Complete. Yeah. There's a lot of things going wrong. Right. And, and trying to trying to find a path forward was the most important way with confidence. And so I leaned on my experience more at Liberty High School when I was 27 when I got here than I did my Washington Lee days, right? Because, mm. you know, developing a program, building something is building something, whether you're doing it at the high school level, uh, you're doing it at the college level, the pro level, you're building. And so I lean more on that. Uh, you know, I, you know, now take to Washington and probably a little more comfortable, right? You know, you know, the families, you know, the players, you know, the roster, Right. You're embedded in what you're doing offensively. A uh, ton of belief behind that. So when I got here, complete overall offensively. Right. You know, uh, coach was on here earlier and I was talking about Tyler Phelps. Well, Tyler, Tyler was finishing his freshman year and was the starting quarterback at Davidson when I arrived, recruited to run a completely different system than mine. Right. So and so when I arrived here offensively, everything was foreign. Now, the blessing was they were failing. Right. You know, they, you know, the year before we got here, they were averaging 17 points a game. We averaged 44 my first year. So that helps. Right. To have that kind of success early on. Um, but the, the, the similarities between the two are very they're, they're, they're not a lot of them. Um, and I think the thing that uh, we found here when you when you take over a program for those that are out there listening, when, when you arrive somewhere that. You know, for some reason, it's been failing, right? There maybe not one specific reason. There's probably a lot. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. I think the first thing is study the history, right? Why, right? We really looked at that. We tried to peel back the layers in every phase of this. Like, why was Davidson football not succeeding? And then how could we change that part of it? Secondly, how could we build trust and confidence, right? Confidence is a huge thing in sports, right? It, it really is. So how do you build that in your athletes? How do you build that in your coaching staff? And so when we arrived here, those are the things we focused on. Like everybody wants to focus on how do I change my roster, right? Especially in this transfer portal. I world. mean, Deion Sanders. Well, what, what, and he's in a place he can probably change his roster. That's great. I'm not, I'm a day. That's not how we do business. Yeah, here. It's so, not. And, and for most of us, we're not living in that world. So for the advice I have is yet when you arrive and you're changing a program, or maybe you're in a program now that needs to be changed, right? That happens, right? And that's okay. You need to hit a reboot, a restart. First thing, hey, look at the history. Peel back the layers. Why are you not succeeding? And be honest with yourself. And then how do I move forward building trust and confidence 
with the new plan. And that that that's really what we did when we arrived here and stuck to it. And here we are. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's now you now we're on the other side of this. We're successful. We we've won more games in five years than the program and won in the previous 20 combined. So how do you stay here? That's our next challenge. How do you stay at being one of the best programs in your league? How do you stay a perennial FCS playoff team? And that's our next challenge. So yeah, so I mean, it's that it's like that book, Good to Great. I mean, yep. Yep. it's it's it's. I mean, but you've won two championships, but you made the the national playoffs. I mean, you're playing against Richmond, this the team that you know your son played for. Yep. I mean, yeah, I guess it is. It's it's harder to take it to that next level, but you, you've done that because you did it at Amherst and you did it at Washington Lee. So like. How do you do it, Coach? I mean, yeah. can you give some advice? I mean, <laughs> well, one, one, don't don't ever get too comfortable. That's right. You know, it, it, I love what I do. I can't wake up. I wake up every morning. Can't wait to get. Yeah, I mean, we're here at seven a.m. That's yes, right. <laughs> right, but it, it, when I say don't get comfortable, that, that doesn't mean you walk around stressed and have a ton of anxiety in life. That means always look how you're going to improve your program, right? And always be willing to be honest with yourself your organization about some of the, the the small failures or why you're not succeeding. And then how do you change that? Right. And I think if you're constantly doing that, you're going to find more answers than anything else. Right. You know, let's take this year. We finished eight and four this year. Most would have considered that a, a marvelous year for Davidson football. Right. There's only a handful of eight win seasons in the history of the program. There's, there's probably in the last 30 years, there's probably less than eight. And we have, three of them in the last three years. Right. Uh, and so how do you, for us, I, we didn't fail this year, but we didn't succeed at a level. I want us to, right. We finished second in our league. We got the, we got an FCS playoff berth. We didn't play well in the playoffs. Um, and you know, we're, we're a non-scholarship program, right? So we're competing when we get there, we're Richmond who's got 64 scholarships. That's a challenge, but we can do that. We can compete. We, we can play better. And so we had to look at when we, settled in December, the dust settled. Hey, what happened? What, how do we win that game? How do we take our program to that next level? What are the answers? And really we spent January as a staff asking ourselves that question at all phases of our game, at everything we do in our program from our strength training. Not that we, we're not trying to reinvent anything. I don't, we have a great thing here. Our kids are confident we feel like our program is moving forward, but how do you take that next step? And I think you always have to be willing to ask yourself, what can I do a little better? Right. How, what small little changes are going to help us? And you got to be willing to peel back the layers from what you just did. So for us last season, what did we do? Where did we not succeed where we thought we could and how can we change that? And I, I think you should always be doing that always with your staff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Coach Grow yesterday, he said these are the two sayings that Bill Parcells would always say, and he said he he would only really start to emphasize this when there was a new guy, like a new player or a new coach. He'd just really hammer this home. How many times does a skunk have to hit you in the face? <laughs> like, huh? Yeah, like how many times does uh, that, that kid need to be late to class? How many times does that coach have to show up or not show up when he's supposed to. How many times does that kid got to get suspended? How many times does a skunk have to hit you in the face? That was the first one. And I was like, pro probably one, coach. <laughs> I mean, because if you do it more than that, then you're probably gone. Yeah. Then the second one was never, never underestimate the importance of stupidity. Like, and he, uh, yeah. And the thing was, like, Walter Camp's book on football, Bob Wiley, who's on at 3 p.m., told me, like, one of the main things in the book was stupid players cost you games. So, like, Coach, you probably don't have a lot of those in your program, but mistakes happen. So, I mean, do you agree with those two statements? Well, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'd phrase them quite the same way. I, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Bill yeah. Parcells can get away with that. <laughs> yeah. We, one thing we say often is you're either you're either coaching it or you're allowing it, right? That's so Greg Williams, right? So as, as you're watching that. film, right? I sit and watch film with my staff, and they get frustrated by seeing bad footwork. Let's just take footwork, right? We're taking an inside zone step, yes, right? It, it, it 
we're stepping under ourselves. We're not, you know, we're not gaining the ground we want. And we may be talking about that over and over. And I'm like, well, we're either coaching that or allowing that. How do we change that? And if, if how we're coaching that is not getting through to that, that young player, we got to figure out how do we coach him to get him to understand. Right. Cause you know, that we can't just do it the way we are comfortable doing it. Right. I mean, you're, you're talking to a guy who was, I was under center looked like Tom Osborne, Nebraska's offense for 10 years. Now I'm in the gun. I can line up an empty and run my triple option out of empty. I mean, what are we talking right? So you, you got to figure out how do you meet your players where they need to be met? You just can't do it on your terms, right? You can't, right? The world has changed and it's changed our brains, right? All, all the influence of, of really technology, social media, it is changing us, whether we recognize it or not. And as football coaches, if we're not willing to adapt and how we approach our athletes, how we approach our programs, and I don't mean by using social media, certainly we use it a lot. I, it, it benefits us. And if you're not using it out there to benefit your program, well, you probably should. But I'm talking about how we think and how we learn and how we grow. And so it, we always got to identify that. But we say it a lot. If you're, you're either coaching or allow it, that's how we would say that. And change that, right? You can, you can change behavior. You can change habit. How do we change behavior and habit, right? right? Players come into our programs with, with habits and behaviors developed at the level before us, right? They're all coming from different. We, we have 23 states on our roster. 23 mm-hmm. states, right? So our guys are coming from all over. Well, they've been coached differently from all over. We we should not expect for them to arrive and immediately grasp our methods, right? Our ide- ideologies and the way we do things. We've got to coach them. Like we got to teach them how to practice. It's we a got new to, culture. You got to teach them your culture. We have to. And if you think they're just going to arrive and understand that, then we're then that's on us, right? So I I think. You, you you, you got to you got to be willing to be honest with yourself. I, I I truly believe in that, and I think it's been been something that uh, has really benefited me as I've grown in our in my career is being willing to to be honest with the how we should grow, the mistakes we're making, and how we can get better. Yeah, coach. I mean, we've been on here an hour, coach. Has it really? Are you yeah. serious? Let's yeah, we, we we've been on here an hour. If anybody's on here and wants to ask Coach a question, ask it. I mean, Coach. It's probably too just, early, Troy. I mean, yeah. like, why, 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 are, why aren't Troy and Scott Abel, why, why are they up at 7 o'clock doing this podcast? Because we love football. Yeah. And, I, I mean, basically at 830, I mean, I got uh, Jared Van Acker. He's got a clinic. It's going to be at Highland Springs High School, May uh, 5th and 6th. And then Bob Wiley at 3. Coach, Alex Marable. Do you even know who he is? He's the offensive line coach in Miami. Yeah, well, he's I, five foot three, coach. Listen, I, I've been I've been watching I've been watching your podcast and some yeah. Of yeah, he's coming on on Monday. I mean, he's an animal, coach. I he's love a, it. I love I mean, it. He, I love it too, man. It's, it's fun. So, coach, what, what else would is there anything else that you would like to tell the coaches out there from Virginia? Um, that are high school coaches or in North Carolina too, coach, because I know you're in North Carolina. I am. Right. Um, well, I think, well, yeah, you know, high school coaches all around. I, I think our business has gotten tougher, right? I mean, just because what's expected of us, right? But I think the biggest thing I, I, I want everyone to know is that, right, the, I think one of the things that's helped me um, is it's never been the most important thing in my life. I, I think I'm pretty good at what I do and I've had, a, I've had a nice career um, and it's not over, I hope, but right. My family, my faith, those are things that have always been at the forefront of what I do. And uh, I, I can't wait. You know, you talk, you said earlier and about interrupt you talk about, well, coach, you don't have time to watch any football. I'm like, I, I do, Troy. I, I, you know, I do. Right. And for coaches that tell you, Oh, we don't have time. We're too busy. Well, I'm not sure they're doing it right. Right. With technology now, I mean, are you really that busy? Do you, and Troy, you're too young. You don't remember the days of splicing, right? No, Rolling I don't. To get, right? I, VHS is as far back as I go. Yeah, so so I, I did that early in my career, right? That was time-consuming, right? To break down film then was time-consuming. Well, now, and plus, man, we got Huddle, you don't even have to do it. What are we talking about, right? So if $1, you $1,000, you can't pay a person $1,000 to break down every film. Man, like, do what you love to do. I do this. I love to do it, but I man. Like I, I, I look forward to having dinner with my wife at night. I look forward to 
to spending time with my family. And I, that's my advice. Like, and you'll be a better coach if you are grounded outside of your profession and you have other things that you love to, that's going to make you a better coach. Your players are going to see that. That doesn't mean you know, I'm talking about great marriages or you just have to have something you're grounded to outside mm-hmm. of this profession because it will eat you up and you shouldn't let it eat you up. It spits you out. Man, will it ever? Yeah. And th- there's a lot of that going on. And so I, I, I tell people like, I'm, you know, so I'm in my office now and, and, and I'm going to leave here and uh, I'm messaged my wife a few minutes ago. I haven't heard back. She's probably still asleep, but I think she's going to meet me downtown Davidson. We're going to walk to the farmer's market, right? I'm going to have a coffee and breakfast with her. And, and that's great. Yeah. The, the, awesome. the good Lord willing, right? I, I probably will sit on my back deck with a cold beverage at some point tonight. Right. So, you know, it, it, it's fine. Find things outside of your office, outside of your world. Cause we could watch, like, I love watching film. We could do it all day, but oh yeah, doesn't necessarily make you better. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, like Brad, Brad Bradley loves dogs, coach. Tom Hall loves yeah. dogs. It's, and we were talking before we came home here. Talk a little bit about dogs, coach. Yeah. Well, I, I also love dogs. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, we have, I was telling coach for those listening out there, coach and I were talking about our dog stories before we got on and I'm a small dog guy. Right. Uh, you know, I am too. So I, I, our theory and my family is big dogs this. make big messes, right? And so uh, big dogs make big best messes. I was do. talking why you said that, Coach. That's great. Yeah. So so we're small dog people, and uh, you know, last year my wife and I both lost. I, I lost my dog. She lost hers uh, really suddenly, and it, it it really shakes you if if you treat your pets like your family, which we oh, yeah. do, and, and it, it shook us, and so. My wife had put our name on a a, a, a register to to rescue a, a small dog, preferably a Chihuahua, right? That's my my wife's love, and and it actually came with a puppy. That, that wasn't the plan, right? So in December, we got a call from a rescue company that had a a four year old Chihuahua that had been um, abandoned with her pups and just abandoned. Mm. And and so uh, we when we arrived to meet her, she had one pup left. And of course now my wife just couldn't say no. So, so now we have two, we, I call it his and hers. Uh, yeah. My, my wife has attached herself to the older one. That's calm and mellow. And she, the, the younger pup, which is not full Chihuahua. We're not quite sure. It's not going to be real big though. We're thinking. Hey, Max, what a great name coach. Great name in Chihuahua. Listen, has that ever happened? I can't imagine how. Troy. <laughs> but I, listen, I, but I mean, Scrappy Doo, Scrappy I mean, Doo might have been half. Yeah, half so, and half Chihuahua. But yeah, uh, Stella, Stella's my dog's name, and uh, she is seven months, and she never crashes. That that's her that's her claim to fame, right? Puppies crash, right? They play hard and they crash. But well, my puppy never crashes, right? Never. I, I've never seen anything like this, but she is awesome. She, 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 she seems to adore us. Uh, she's she seems to really found a great home with us. We're excited about that, and you know, I look forward to get. I, I'm a lake guy. I like to be on the lake here. We, for those you don't know much about Dayson, we live right here on this gorgeous Lake Norman, right? So uh, I plan on I plan on Stella being a boating dog before this summer's over, right? Got her little life jacket. She's gonna love it out in front of the boat. Oh, look man. forward to it. She gets up in my truck and comes to work with me occasionally. So uh, I'm a dog guy. I, I think if you're looking for something to kind of, man, make your soul feel a little better, right? I, I, it's, it's one of God's blessings to us that he gave us, he gave his dogs to be companions. Amen. Man's best friend. Yes, sir. No doubt. Coach, thank you. Oh, thank Troy, you for coming on. You're the best. No, well, we're yeah. right back. I at look you, up bro. to you, Coach. You know, Virginia uh, High School League. Hey, who, who was your principal at Albemarle? Was it Dr. Hahn? No, no. So Billy Hahn was my. So Billy was Dr. Hahn. Come on, you can't listen. I hope Billy Hahn listens to this, right? And the fact that <laughs> I'm going to tell you something after you talk about him. Hey, listen. Yeah, the fact that Troy Taylor called you Dr. Hahn that truly means Coach Hahn is is no longer alive, right? So. You know, Ooh. yeah, I, I tell him that all the time, right? So, so Billy Hahn was really, I would tell you, he's one of my mentors in coaching. Wow. Right? So, what so, a great guy he is. Right. And in 94, uh, Billy hired me at my, my high school where I played football. So he hired me to be an offensive assistant. I worked for Billy for two years. And really, Billy was the one who got me started on 
this option thinking of football, right? You know, wow, it really is, right? So I, I was, I grew up a passing quarterback. I, um, that's who we were. Uh, and when I arrived at Western at the time, so Billy was the head coach at Western Alamo, and uh, he was employing some option principles uh, in in pro asset, and it really got my brain churning for option football in some form or fashion. Now I'm never a traditional. So you talked about the Colts earlier. Yeah. The, the Colts don't claim me. The flex bone people don't claim me. I'm outside. The, and I'm, and I'm good with that, by the way, I want everybody to hear me say it. Cause I'm not, I'm, I'm this very unique offense. Uh, but uh, Billy got me started in this and, and been a friend and a mentor my entire career. Right. And uh, you call him Dr. Han. He deserves that by the way, all listeners, all <laughs> I call him doc. I said, yeah. hey, Doc. He called he, me and he said, Troy, Troy, I want to I want to do something for coaches' education. You know, there's nothing been done for coaches' education. Co- <laughs> what does he call it? Prof- coaches' professional development. Professional. He just called them buzzwords. Yeah. I'm like, well, coach, I've done 130 clinics on football since January. That's that's education. Yeah, like you want coaches' professional development. Well, how about just go to the go to the uh, playlist? Oh. Yeah. Well, I remember when when he called me, so I had taken the head job at Liberty and he was getting ready to step down at Western and take a principal job. And I said, you're killing coach Hahn. Don't go killing coach Hahn. <laughs> uh, but what a good move for him. And uh, he's just made a, a life. We're lucky of, to have him. Yeah. I mean, he's made a life out of leadership. Right. And, and uh, I, I owe so much to Billy. Right. And, uh, I've said that at different clinics through the years, and uh, I, I really appreciate you mentioning him today because I hadn't mentioned him yet. And I so what a, what an unbelievable man, and he's a guy who did it right, right? We talked about his family was always really important to him. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, he he had his boundaries, and uh, he he's a trip now. Like, listen, those of you that know him now, man, you should see him as Coach Hawn. You thought you think he's entertaining now? Coach Hawn's entertaining. Yeah, I like he likes me because I'm a coach. I think that's why he likes me. He just, I remember the first time I, I called him. It was like during the, the 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 pandemic or something. I like called him and I sent him a I sent him a message on Facebook. He instantly calls me right back. I'm like, this guy's the head of Virginia High School League. He calls me right back. Okay, yeah, I love him. <laughs> he answers my texts. He's the best. Oh, he is the best. Hey, look, you got a new follower now. Listen, I just got, he he just hit me up on message. Our man Tyler Phelps, who we talked about, right? My former quarterback who's at West Florida. He's on here watching at some point. I just got a screenshot. Dr. Hahn was? No, no, Tyler oh, Phelps. Tyler Phelps. Hey, Billy Hahn, there's no way he's watching right now, right? You, hey, but you should go tag Virginia High School League in this. I did. I tagged it. I went, when I post this, I will. I'll make a short or something. I'll cut it out and send it to him. Oh, that's awesome. About us talking to him. Oh, Thank you. That's it. Appreciate that's you, what, Coach. Troy, I appreciate everything you do for football, right? Yeah, man, I love and it, man. I'm the blessed. high school football in Virginia is better because of you, Troy. Um, I, I so grateful for you having me on. And uh, listen, everybody who who actually woke up at seven to tune in, thank you. This guy right here, Coach Steve Sawney, I love him. Oh. I met him because of Coach McNally. He sent me a message and thanked me. And Coach, this guy, he is a great Christian man. He goes to the camp that they have in New York every. Every year, yeah. Clyde Christensen, Bob Sanders. This guy is a great man. Coach oh. Phelps is a great young coach with a bright future. He thanked me for getting Coach McNally to come on Twitter. Oh, and that's he, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's well, what I claim to fame. I got Coach McNally on Twitter. Oh, well, listen. That, Did you know gonna, that Coach McNally is on Twitter? Listen, that's going to carry you a lot further than getting Scott Abel on. I'm just <laughs> uh, I don't know. Virginia, your name carries weight, Coach. Oh, I don't know. Thank listen. you. Uh, hey, Troy, thanks thanks for having me on. Hey, enjoy your weekend. Thank okay. you. Look forward to watching all the other episodes. Thank you. I appreciate you.